I think the, the bond market's been pricing this action in all along, right? I mean, as, as Josh had just mentioned, uh, whether it's a 25 basis point cut in July or September, now we have it effectively priced in. If you look at the forward rate, which is um, an easy thing to interpret from the market, it says that essentially you get the rate cut in July. So 100% nearly, right? Yeah, roughly, yeah. And so when you take a look at it, um, it, it's delivering to expectations. And when you go and dissect the dot plots, the fact that you have roughly half of the governors saying that there should be a cut, uh, most of them saying there should be at least two rate cuts or at least 150 basis point rate cut by the end of the year, I think it's delivering on market expectations. And so uh, that's why you're not seeing a lot of activity in terms of equities, uh, credit spreads are holding in there. What I did find interesting, though, is that the tips market didn't move as much as treasuries did, the inflation side. And so what that means is that break-even spreads or inflation expectations actually went up today. So this seems to be um, a bond market that's pricing a lower growth rate here, and that's what you're seeing in lower yields today. Michelle, I thought the most definitive point that was made by Chair Powell at the entire news conference was when he asked, when he answered a question on, on President Trump. He said, I think the law is clear and I have a four-year term and I fully intend to serve it. Does that clear up any of the uncertainty around his position? You know, he's been making that same comment now for some time. In every press conference, he's asked that exact same question. Um, in the 60 Minutes interview he had back in March, he also responded to that. So I think that that's right. I think he fully intends to serve out his term. I think his goal and his intention is to do what's right for the economy, um, regardless of the political noise. And I think what the Fed has decided on is that the number one goal is to sustain this recovery. They are unwilling to risk um, having the economy fall into recession. And he made that very clear also noting what they the commentary they got from the Fed Listens uh, conference that a lot of the, the the economic actors, a lot of communities are first starting to see the benefits of this recovery and they don't want it to take it away too soon. They want this expansion to continue. They want to test whether inflation can move up and they're willing to act in order to get that. And that to me is the key takeaway from the meeting. David, what, what's your take? Did, uh, the, did Mr. Powell sort of nail the aspect of not delivering a cut but guiding towards one? I think he did. And actually, I think it was a very difficult meeting for, for Chair Powell. And I think the market also has some scars from communications in the past. So we're always a little bit hesitant to give him the benefit of the doubt. But I think he nailed this one. And he really gave us what I like to think of as uh, insurance guidance instead of insurance cuts. It's a piece we wrote last week. And I think that was the message that... These guys, they, they have their trigger, their finger on the trigger. They're ready to go. All they need is the excuse. It could be data. It could be markets. It could be just that they get frustrated with this persistent miss in inflation, which Jay highlighted again uh, numerous times in the press conference and is obviously behind the, the Bullard, excuse me, the Bullard dissent today. He's been a big proponent of this. But I think there's plenty of other folks on the committee that are sort of getting tired of that inflation miss, and that's going to be what drives them to actually cut, I think, uh, later this summer or early, uh, early in the fall.